Hey there everybody, welcome back to our channel. We hope you had a great summer and uh, you're ready to get back into work. Uh, sure as hell no, I'm not. Um, but uh, we are going to kick it off with just this short little tutorial today. And um, we'll be back into doing some detailed tutorials. Uh, uh, September rolls in. So um, today to get us started and get, get, get the taste back again for, for 3D modeling, I'm going to look with you at a beautiful little command in Rhino that doesn't get a lot of appreciation. It's called uh, the delete holes. And with delete holes, you also have uh, move hole and uh, 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 place hole. Uh, this is a couple of commands you'll find in your Boolean tools right at the bottom in your drop down menu. Uh, my favorite is delete holes and very often when you're working on something and uh, you're not happy with uh, what you did and you need to delete something off a surface, this comes in awfully handy because you don't have to rebuild anything or explode surfaces or uh, put things, uh, pull things apart to, 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 to rebuild separate surfaces and then retrim everything. Um, there are a few exceptions as to how it works, and that's what I'm going to do with you today. So uh, let's kick it off. Um, I am using my dome ring. Um, I'm using my, my base template for a dome ring. If you're not sure how to build this, it is available on our um, ring uh, tutorial which is uh, from a couple of months ago and the beginning of that tutorial should walk you straight through how to make the dome ring and um, what we're going to do with our dome ring is we are going to place a couple of stones kind of scattered loosely on the surface and then we're going to analyze the surface and we are going to look at how we can change the scatterings without having to rebuild the surface rebuild the ring so forth. Okay, so let's get right into it. Um, I'm going to go up to my Grasshopper Gold toolbox setting here. That's a uh, Grasshopper Gold available on Food for Rhino for free. Very nice uh, jewelry tool. Um, I'm not seeing what I'm looking for in my toolbox. I'm just going to move it over a bit to the left. What I want is stones on the surface, so gems, gems on the surface. There we go. So, Click that, it will open Grasshopper. So if you haven't opened Grasshopper yet in your Rhino application, it takes a few seconds to, to open. Click our surface to orient onto. And what we have is the choice of changing the gem size. Uh, you can program a distance between stones. So if, if, I, if I put in one stone here, um, and I want to put one right next to it, it will show me that distance that I should keep with the green line outside. So the purple line is the actual line of the stone. Um, it's a good guide. Uh, I would like to work with some larger stones, so I'm going to program stone size of three. I'm going to scatter a couple of big stones here and there. And another one over here. And then we'll go in, we'll change gem size down to two. And we will place a couple more stones in. And like that, so it's kind of a little bit like a bubble ring, uh, but bubble in the sense of the stones will look like bubbles. So kind of uh, kind of what would be nice is to make it a change stone size down to 1.3 smallest that I'm going to go on this uh, you know make it a, a yellow gold ring with champagne colored diamonds so you kind of get the impression it's, it's bubbles from champagne glass uh, okay we'll put one in here and Oh, let's see it from the top. Hmm, we could put another small one here or there. Put another one in there. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so press enter. There we go. So we've got our ring from the 
sides. And now we have to put the stones in. So for that, we're going to go back to the same command in Grasshopper Gold. We're just going to right click on it. It's for gems on circle. And what we have here is our menu. We need to select the circles for that. I'm literally just going to select objects in my layer called stone placement. And I'm going to click on select circles and I have my stones. And it shows me the sizes. I'm going to move them below the surface a bit, like around about there. Let's go there. It's good. No, no. Move it out a little bit more. That's better. Actually, we want small circles, small stones to show. So create and close. And there we have our stones. And Next, we're going to fetch our cutters. So we're going to go to the cutters menu, gem cutters spire, uh, select the gems. So it should be a group. No, not so. I'm going to right click and select all the objects in that layer and select gems. So at this point, I switch my ring off. So I can see what my spire looks like. I want it to be the size of the stone. I'm going to scale that up to one. Uh, sorry, that's the wrong thing. I want the scale. So scale is about one. There we go. That's the right size. Um, we're going to move the spire down so that we can move the cutter up so it mixes the size of the stone. Okay, move that down a little bit. Okay, and create. Okay, and close this. And now what's left to do is. Um, Select our ring, select Boolean difference in the cutters. We'll delete the input and say enter. And that's me in holiday mode. I did that all wrong. Let's try that again. So select the ring, Boolean difference, and select the cutters and enter. That's better. Okay. Uh, can switch our stones off here and switch our placement our, our curves off and see what the ring looks like now this would be prepared this would be like right to take now to the setter uh, if you'd want to have it set M maybe you'd make the holes a bit smaller so there'd be more material to work with but this would be pretty much the ring finished as I wanted but I'm not happy with pff, couple of the placements of the stones maybe I, I don't want these down here it's too far down the shank and this one definitely too far um i would like to move uh this big stone up or maybe further down so what are we gonna do here i just go to delete hole and i click on the hole that I want to delete and there you go it's gone yes indeed it's gone so let's try that again uh, just press enter for the same for the same tool and I will go back and delete and voila but now let's try this one let's see this one is not deleting why is it not deleting oh there's a simple reason for that and that's because there is a seam line over here so if i had to explode my surface i would see running down from the center here this thick line is a seam which means that this is not within my surface so the delete holes a uh, delete hole command only works when it's within a surface so this this one, for example, is within the surface. This one is within the surface. But this one is cutting out of the edge of the surface and into the other edge of the surface. It's not 
in the surface anymore. So it is not deleting and repatching the surface. Um, but otherwise, you could pretty much delete every single hole here. Uh, the other hole tools like make hole, place hole, revolve hole, uh, place hole uh, would work as well. But these five up here are more for planar surfaces, so you wouldn't be able to use them on a domed ring. Um, but they're awfully handy if you are working with a flat surface that you're planning to flow along a curve or if you're planning to flow along a surface afterwards. Um, so play around with those and have a look at them. Um, and we hope that you learned something new today and uh, we'll be back in about two weeks with our first detailed tutorial for the, for the, the, the autumn for the fall and uh, we wish you still a good rest of the vacation. Cheers!